you know, I think with a film like this, getting the, the, the tone is so key. Uh, you, you don't want to have something that's artificially happy, but you don't want to have something that's, that's overbearing, too. Were there happier cuts of the film and then less happier cuts of the film, and then it was a matter of finding that happy mid-ground? Yeah, there were so many iterations of this movie. Uh, I, I have to say, to great credit to TJ, he has this extraordinary ability. I go out, I shoot a lot of my own stuff, uh, and I lose objectivity very, very quickly. I, I'll get out there with the camera and we'll come in and we'll cut a scene very quickly and I'll be like, it's the best thing ever. And TJ, uh, we thought, you know, Derek, our editor is here and Mahaffey, our editor, who are incredibly talented guys, and we thought the film was aces. And it was, re I don't know, it was like two and a half hours long or something. And we long. sit And we sit down and we watch it and we're like, eh, you know, and TJ does this thing because he's a festival programmer and he's a, a wise doc guy. And he looks at it and he's like, everyone give it a number. And we're like, 10, 9, 10. And he's like, fucking four. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. So there's another year of editing. Yeah. So it, it, I think it got a lot better from those cuts. Well, so, so, was it, so it was a matter of, of sort of more finding a focus rather than... I think actually it was really, we spent a lot of time um, learning. Learning about this, uh, the disability rights movement, learning about disability community, uh, learning about who, these, who AJ is as a person and what that means and what his basic rights are. And neither of us, I mean, I would say TJ was almost petrified of disability in the beginning and, you know, just having no experience. And I had none either. And it was, that's why I was so emotionally overwhelmed when I first came into this world. So I think, I think there was just a really long learning curve for us to, to understand. And we don't have a disability, so why is it our right to tell these stories? Because we're professional filmmakers, and if we take the time and we do it well and we learn these stories, then we can share them, you know? So, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, what, what were the things that, that, you, that you realized, like, this... I mean, obviously, what makes it... What made it into the final cut is, is sort of what you identified as most important. Were there, were there things that you really were really sad to not make it into what people saw tonight? Yeah, yeah, I mean... You know, I, Derek would even say this, our editor, when it was really long, he's like, we can't lose that. And, I, you know, normally the editor's like, we got to lose that. And I'm like, I was like, we have to lose that. And then, you know, then we'd kind of put it back in or reshape it or, yeah, I mean, it was just a living, breathing thing for so long until we finally, you know, we didn't have any more notes, you know, we, we didn't know how to fix it or make it better or... So yeah, I, you know, that's a, that's a tough question. I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, we workshopped the film for months and months and had private screenings with uh, colleagues and really tried to find the right tone and the right balance of, of uh, you know, emotional moments and, and happy moments. And it, it was a lot of work and I wanted to thank, you know, all the filmmakers that we had come watch two hour screenings to get it to where it's at today. Yeah, we're very lucky. We live in, you know, in like Los Feliz and Silver Lake and we have great people like Kirby Dick and Doug Blush and Pat Creedon and all these great guys who get to come and kind of workshop with us, you know.